in this lesson, we're going to talk about a reaction of aldehydes and ketones. That reaction involves addition to their carbonyl group. And we're going to look at the addition of nucleophiles, so nucleophilic addition. And just to clarify, these are the functional groups that we're talking about today. We have our aldehyde with a hydrogen atom on one side of the carbonyl and a hydrocarbon group on the other side. I'm just showing a little stick here, but this needs to be carbon. And we have our ketone with two hydrocarbon groups, one on either side of the ketone. It was important to make this distinction because there are other carbonyl-containing functional groups in organic chemistry. Some common ones are acid chlorides, esters, and amides. But these differ in reactivity from the aldehyde and ketone because they each contain a potential leaving group, so they react by a different mechanism. Okay, first, let's look at the properties of the carbonyl group that'll teach us something about its reactivity. There is an inductive effect in the carbonyl group. On the Pauling scale, oxygen has an electronegativity of 3.44, while carbon has an electronegativity of 2.55. So we're seeing a difference of about 0.9 in relative electronegativity here, with oxygen being much more electronegative than carbon. So we can draw a dipole in this molecule with a little arrow. And what this is helping us to show is that the electrons are pulled more toward the oxygen atom. They spend more time surrounding oxygen in the bonds that are shared between carbon and oxygen. Because of the double bond in this compound, there is also a resonance effect. We can draw an arrow that shows the double bond breaking and an extra lone pair going to oxygen. I'm going to add on my lone pairs so we can keep track of all the electrons on oxygen. And when we show this electron flow, we're moving electrons away from carbon and on to oxygen. The resonance form looks like this. So from this resonance form, we can see that carbon has all this positive character. We're going to be talking about the interaction with nucleophiles, things with extra electrons, things that attack. And so we're going to see interaction at this carbon. If you're really new to this, you might be like, KP, how do I know to push my electrons up onto oxygen? Well, let me show you what would happen if you push them the wrong way. We'll do this in red so we know that it's bad. <laughs> okay, so let's take the electrons and push them onto carbon. Now we're taking the electrons away from oxygen, putting them onto this carbon, and the resonance structure that we'll draw now looks like this. So we end up with a positive charge on oxygen and a negative charge on carbon. If we look back at our electronegativities, oxygen is the more electronegative atom. So when drawing resonance, we want to put negative charge on the more electronegative partner in this double bond. That's oxygen, and we've given it a positive charge. Carbon, the less electronegative element, bears a negative charge. So this is incorrect, and I'm just going to put a little X over it so we can forget that that ever happened. Okay, now that we know that the carbon of the carbonyl has all this positive character, we can even say it's delta positive. And to complete our dipole on this molecule, we can say the oxygen is delta negative. Now let's look at the mechanism of how aldehydes and ketones will react with nucleophiles. Here I've just shown a generic nucleophile, abbreviated NU. It has some extra electrons that it can share in a bond. That extra negative charge is going to be attracted to the electropositive carbon of the carbonyl. So we can draw an arrow for how the nucleophile will attack like this. Now we don't want to make five bonds to carbon, so we have to break a bond. Well, that's convenient. Oxygen is electronegative and is pretty okay with holding a negative charge. So we're going to push the double bond up onto oxygen. Now let's draw the structure we'll get. One thing I want you to notice is that even though we're using this abbreviation of a nucleophile that's just very generic, we're showing it with a negative charge. And we have a neutral molecule reacting with a negative, so whatever we produce needs to be overall negatively charged. So we're good, neutral, negative, and we have a negative charge on our oxygen in the product where the two come together. Now, in a second step, we can add in some acid which I'm just going to abbreviate as H+, and we'll produce an alcohol from this reaction. 
Okay, to learn organic chemistry, we need to learn our actual reactions. So even though we have a general sense that nucleophiles can add, we need to know what the nucleophile is. Let's look at some examples. The first one we'll look at is cyanide. The nucleophile is Cn minus with a negative charge on carbon. Sometimes we'll see this as a salt, sodium cyanide, and the sodium we can regard it as a spectator ion. It's just there to balance the negative charge. Let's look at this reaction and see what the cyanide anion actually looks like. So here we have a carbon triple bonded to a nitrogen. This will attack, as in our mechanism above, and give us our negatively charged intermediate. We can then add in a little bit of acid and get the product of this reaction, which is called a cyanohydrin. I'm going to add a bond between my oxygen and hydrogen, just add the little line there, so I can show you something about this reaction. This reaction is reversible, and if we treat our cyanohydrin with a little bit of base and warm it up, we can deprotonate the hydrogen atom, take the electrons from the OH bond and reform the carbonyl, and kick out cyanide. This gives us back our ketone and CN minus. The reason this reverses so readily is because cyanide is a good leaving group. Another nucleophile that adds to carbonyls is the acetylide anion. This nucleophile again has a negative charge on carbon with a carbon-carbon triple bond and an H on this end. The way that we can generate this is by treating acetylene with sodium metal. This gives us our anion and a sodium plus that's hanging out. This nucleophile can add to our carbonyl. The electrons will bond here, pushing up onto oxygen. From this we get our anion, our alkoxide, that can be treated with a little bit of acid to give our alcohol. Other common nucleophiles that add to the carbonyl group are organometallic reagents. For example, we could add an alkyl lithium. Here I'll show ethyl lithium or an ethyl Grignard reagent. Here's ethyl magnesium bromide. Now you might be wondering, where the heck is the negative charge? Well, these, I'm drawing them like they have a covalent bond here, and they do. They have some covalent character in this carbon metal bond. However, that bond also contains significant ionic character. So we might think of our Grignard and our alkyl lithium as looking more like this to see the reaction. So here we have the two carbons of our ethyl group, one, two, with a negative charge on it, balanced by an Li+. And for the Grignard, we can think about it as looking like this. The magnesium carries a two plus charge and is balanced by the carbon anion and the Br-. minus. So when you show attack, Using an alkyl lithium or a Grignard, you can use either form of these to really show the attack. If you're using this, you'll show the nucleophilic attack coming from the carbon-lithium bond. And from the Grignard, it'll come from the carbon-magnesium bond. And just so I don't have arrows going off into nowhere, let's add a little generic electrophile that it can attack. Just a little E plus to represent that. So let's look at how this reacts with our carbonyl compound now. I'm going to represent the organometallic reagent with this form. So two carbons are a little ethyl group with the negative on one end. And we're going to attack the electropositive carbon, pushing the electrons up onto oxygen. And from this first step, we get our alkoxide with a new ethyl group on it coming from the organometallic reagent. And once that reaction is completely done, we can add in a little bit of acid and get our alcohol. In this lesson, we talked about the inductive and resonance effects that make aldehydes and ketones so special and have this electropositive carbon atom that can react with nucleophiles to form alcohols. We talked about three examples of these nucleophiles, cyanide, the acetylide anion, and organometallic reagents. As ever, thank you for watching, and I hope you learned something.